Hey everyone, it's Seth. Welcome to my review of the AYN Odin 2. What is this handheld? What is there to be excited about? It's a retro handheld running on Android with a six inch screen and one of the best, most powerful processors on the market, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Because of this, it is also the most powerful Android handheld I have ever tested. Far more powerful than things like the Retroid Pocket Flip or 3 Plus. Let's just take a look at the unit itself and all of the key features, functionality, buttons, and joysticks. Across the bottom of the unit, you can see your USB-C port, which is used for the dock, charging, and video output, as well as the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Across the top, you'll find your shoulder buttons with the L2 and R2 buttons being analog, the micro SD card slot, a micro HDMI output port, the ventilation for the fan, your volume rockers, and the power button. The joysticks are Hall effect sensors, which means they won't drift over time, which is great. And the face buttons have a very nice tactile feel to them without being too recessed so that you're not rubbing your thumb against the casing of the unit itself. The build quality feels excellent and the plastic has a nice texture to it so that it's not too slick when you're holding it. The D-pad is also really nice and looks similar to the one Retroid uses and I've never had any issues with it when I'm playing my favorite 2D fighting games. On the rear of the unit, you've got customizable M1 and M2 buttons, as well as an expansive grill, which is great for passive cooling if you've got the fan turned off. And of course, by now, you've surely noticed the LEDs around those joysticks and along the sides. That lighting is fully customizable. You can tweak the color, intensity, brightness, whatever to your liking. I'm sure some of you are curious about the size of the Odin 2, so let's compare it to some other common handhelds that I have lying around. If you thought it might be the size of the Miu Mini, well, obviously, that, that's just silly. Don't think that. And obviously, it's equally not as small as the Miu Mini Plus. What were you thinking? Whether it's closed, or open it's also bigger than a retroid pocket flip which is to be expected it's just not going to be as portable as the clamshell flip the first device that you might think would be similar is the retroid pocket 3 or 3 plus however those are still quite a bit smaller than the odin 2. of course they also aren't as ergonomic without any sort of grips on the rear. Now by comparison, the Retroid Pocket Flip when it's closed is a bit of a chunky boy and if you have one of those then that might give you an idea of about the thickness of the Odin 2. On the other hand, the original Nintendo Switch is definitely larger than the Odin 2 and it's also considerably less comfortable to hold due to just much poorer ergonomics. And finally, if you happen to have one around, the Absolute is a seven inch streaming handheld and it is definitely bigger than the Odin 2. Here are all the system specs and I'll take you through one by one. Keep in mind the Odin 2 is available in three different models, the Base, Pro, and Max. The only differences are the amount of RAM and the amount of internal storage, which you can of course upgrade by adding your own micro SD cards. Here is that list of specs, and as you can see, depending on the model, you get either 8 gigs, 12 gigs, or 16 gigabytes of RAM, as well as 128, 256, or 512 gigabytes of internal storage. All models include a 1920 by 1080p 6 inch IPS LCD touchscreen. Odin 2 features TV out using either HDMI or DisplayPort via USB C, 
You've got Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.3 for connectivity. And of course, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for your headphones, an 8,000 milliamp hour battery, active cooling, and quick charge 5.0. It's available in five colors. First up, this nice black. Also, of course, the white, which you've seen on my device. It's also available in a translucent blue, translucent purple, and a cool gray. Another important feature is the 8,000 milliamp hour battery. So let's take a look at that first. What kind of longevity can you expect from a battery that size on a device with such a powerful processor? Honestly, that's going to depend on what you're emulating. In my tests, when I was running at max power, playing something like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Nintendo Switch, I got between three and a half hours and four hours of battery life, which in my opinion is already pretty impressive. On the other hand, something I consider to be closer to the middle range would be the Sega Dreamcast. And in that case, I actually got nine hours of NFL 2K2 running upscaled all the way at 4K on the Odin 2. Which means if you're playing older 16-bit consoles, you may get more than 10 hours of gameplay before you need to charge. It also does have front-facing high quality speakers and in my experience these things can get loud with the volume up all the way i was easily able to hear it playing games from the other room even from downstairs actually it is running on android 13 which means you have access to the entire library of android software and you've got plenty of processing power and ram to get the most out of any of those games that you want to play on Android. Of course, that's not the most important thing to most of us. However, it's still nice to know that whether you want to play Vampire Survivors, Genshin Impact, or say Asphalt 9, you're going to have plenty of horsepower to play all of them at their absolute best. It's also packed with the latest wireless technology you get dual band Wi-Fi 7 as well as Bluetooth 5.3. So you should be able to connect any of your Bluetooth devices and thanks to that dual band Wi-Fi capability, if you have the right hardware at home, you'll be able to make the most out of things like Xbox Cloud. And my personal experience was that the Odin 2 handled Xbox Cloud very, very well. I didn't experience any graphical issues the system itself is very comfortable to hold and is not too heavy so that you don't experience a lot of strain if you're wanting to play from the sofa or something like that. The analog sticks themselves have just the right amount of travel to make them great for racing games like say Forza, as do the left and right shoulder buttons. On smaller handhelds I found that although the shoulder buttons may be analog, the distance they travel is so small that it really is hard to vary the amount of throttle you're giving in a racing game. On the Odin 2 that isn't the case. Those shoulder buttons have a nice amount of resistance and plenty of travel. What about the price? Well, after the Indiegogo campaign completed, AYN has started selling Odin 2 on their website. And it is available in the three different models at different price points. The standard pricing for the base model is $339. However, right now, until they finish shipping all of the pre-order units, you can get it for $299. The Pro model, which is the model I'm reviewing in this video, is priced at $439, but right now, you can order it for $369. And finally, the Max, which includes 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of internal storage. 
That one is priced at $4.99, but for now, you can order it for $4.59, again, until they finish shipping all of the pre-orders. Finally, before getting into the emulation capabilities of the Odin 2, I do want to remind everyone that it does have video out, which you can use either via the micro HDMI output or the USB-C output, which is what I'm doing here. In my experience, the video output quality to my 50 inch 4K TV was great. And I also didn't notice any additional input latency as a result of sending the signal out to the TV. But really, again, I know what most of my viewers are interested in is how this performs as an emulation device. I'm not going to go through every system that it emulates. If you're looking to play, well, any of this stuff here, just know it's gonna run great. You don't have to worry about that. So, I want to start from there and take you through and show you how well it performs at a variety of higher-end retro console emulation. Let's get started. First, with some handheld emulators. My experience was that the Odin 2 does an amazing job with the PSP. This is Ridge Racer 2 running at 4x native resolution and I didn't have to do any tweaking or any speed hacks to get it to perform flawlessly. And that's really nice to know that we no longer have to deal with that sort of an issue. I know with devices like the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, I had to dedicate entire guides to getting this game to play this well. Likewise, God of War Ghost of Sparta also played just fine at 4x resolution without any speed hacks at all. So you can finally stop worrying about ditching your PSP and just take this with you wherever you go if, if you really just want to play this game and a lot of you seem to. Now Nintendo 3DS emulation on Android is definitely not as developed as PSP emulation is. However, Luckily, the Odin 2 has just a lot of extra horsepower to throw around, and that gets 3DS games playing much better than they would on lesser handhelds. Mario Kart here, for example, I was able to max out the resolution available to me in Citra without it even breaking a sweat. For my Saturn fans out there, and I know there are several of you, don't worry, I'm not going to let you down here, Saturn emulation on Odin 2 is impeccable. The best I've ever seen on Android by far. No matter which game I threw at it, the Odin 2 was able to play Saturn at either 1080p, the native resolution of the screen, or if you really want to, you could just set it to 4x native Saturn resolution, which would be even higher. It just didn't matter. The Odin 2 has got plenty of processing power to just play your entire Saturn library with no compromises. And it should come as no surprise that Dreamcast emulation is also beautiful. Every game I tested I ran at 4K because I just wanted to see if it would and I didn't experience any slowdowns on any of the games I tested and just so you know, rendering them at 4K out to a TV was a really great experience for someone like me who loved Dreamcast. As far as GameCube is concerned, well, you've probably already seen my previous GameCube showcase, and if you haven't, I will link it up here on the screen. But GameCube games, at least everyone I've tested, run fine at 1080p, which means no compromises for GameCube either. But I do have an entire showcase for GameCube, so if you want to know more about how the Odin 2 performs at that, just go ahead and click the link. Another system that's going to work absolutely great on the Odin 2 
is the PlayStation 2. As you can see, this is Ridge Racer 5, and you won't be experiencing any slowdowns, even if you're playing it well above the resolution of the Odin 2 screen itself. But much like the GameCube, I've already done a showcase for PS2 on Odin 2, so if you want to see more PlayStation 2 footage, click that link. And I know this is starting to sound repetitive, but I've also done a Nintendo Wii Odin 2 showcase already. However, if you're new to the channel, let me just assure you that yes, the Odin 2 can play Nintendo Wii and do it incredibly well. If you want to see more Wii footage, you know what to do. The link is up there. Finally, of course, is the Nintendo Switch, which is the most advanced and newest gaming console that the Odin 2 and just Android in general can emulate. And although I've also done a showcase of Switch footage on Odin 2, I do want to take just a minute to talk about Switch emulation on Android in general. Now, Yuzu, which is the best performing in general emulator for Nintendo Switch on Android, is still very new. So not all games will work. However, the fact that things like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Mario Wonder run this well and this close to full speed already tells me that the Odin 2's hardware is capable of playing Switch games at full speed. However, the software side of things may take a bit of time to catch up. Another note is that Yuzu tends to be very demanding on RAM. So, because of that, if you're very interested in Switch emulation, I recommend that you buy the Pro or Max models. In particular, Yuzu just does not like it if your system has 8 gigs or less of RAM. Now, that certainly could change as these emulators develop, and as there's more competition in the Switch Android emulation scene. But at least at this moment, if you want to get the most you can out of Switch emulation on Android, you're going to want more than 8 gigs of memory, which means choosing the Pro or Max model of the Odin 2. So then, would I recommend you buy the Odin 2? Well, the two key things that I think might discourage you from the Odin 2 would be the size, because it isn't a small, pocketable device. The Odin 2 is by no means a large handheld. However, it is not what I would consider to be highly portable. It feels great, the ergonomics are great, but especially if you're going to be putting it inside some sort of case, it's going to be a little bit bulky for taking with you everywhere you go and carrying it around throughout the day. You're going to want to put it in a bag and it's going to be noticeable. You're not pocketing this handheld. However, the excellent battery life and quick charge 5.0 also just make it a great device to have with you all the time because unless you're playing Switch, you're not going to have to worry about charging the battery even if you're gaming all day. And even if you do need to charge, you can get 50% of the battery back in only about 30 minutes. It is a little pricey compared to some of its competitors. However, the performance does easily justify that price, especially right now at the pre-order pricing where you can get the system for between $350 and $450, you're getting a top-of-the-line Android processor in a handheld. You couldn't get that processor in a phone for this price, so the cost to the performance is easy to justify. If Switch and convenient Wii 
PlayStation 2 and GameCube emulation without compromises isn't important to you, then sure, there are smaller, cheaper handhelds you could buy. However, if you just want to spend a little bit more money and get one system that you'll be satisfied with for a lot longer, that makes buying an Odin 2 an easy choice. It really doesn't have a competitor in the Android market right now. I've gone through a lot of retro handhelds in just the last year, and it always felt like there was something better just around the corner. It's also important to remember when trying to justify the cost to yourself that right now, there aren't Android emulators for things like the PS3 or the Xbox 360. That means your purchase is a little bit more future-proof than normal. You're already getting a top-of-the-line processor, and there's really no other system left to emulate anyway. I expect that quite quickly, Switch emulation will catch up to the point where basically the entire library will play at full speed on the Odin 2. So you don't have to worry that your purchase is going to be outdated quickly with something better just around the corner. There's nothing faster out there right now, and even if there were, there's nothing else for it to emulate. That means that at least for right now, the Odin 2 really is all you need, and that makes it a great buy.